So here green is melody, blue is the harmony, and red is the bass. Are you writing bass like this? Because I certainly do sometimes. I think we're all guilty of it. You can see that the bass doesn't have much activity and it just sounds okay. Now compare that example to this one. more energy and drive the piece has? And would you believe if I told you that the only thing that was changed was the bass? The melody and harmony were exactly the same. But how do we actually get to this spot? How do we have all this movement? What's actually going on here? Let's discuss some composing techniques for more interesting bass lines, ranging from very easy to a little bit more challenging. First things first, let's talk about inversions. Now, if you don't know what an inversion is, an inversion is basically just a chord with a different root note. So typically, if we're talking about like C major, we've got C, E, and G. Now, if we invert that chord, what we're doing is we're saying, take that lowest note and let's start on a different low note in that chord. So if it was C, E, G, maybe we flip the order of the notes. Now we go E, G, C. That's gonna be what's called first inversion. It's the first time we've inverted the chord. Now, if we invert it again, we're gonna change the order with G on the bottom. So now we have G, C, E and that's called second inversion. It's the second time we've inverted it, moving up. So root position is with C, first inversion is with the third, which is E, and then second inversion is with the fifth, which is G. Now, if we invert it again, we get right back to C. So in a standard triad, a chord with three notes, we only have two inversions. We have the root, we have the first inversion, second inversion. So if we're talking about ways to make bass more interesting and our chords go C, C, G, C. First thing we could do is we could actually invert some of those chords. So we could go C, E, G, C. When I say E, I mean E as the first inversion of C major. So we're going C major, C major first inversion, G major, C. We could do G first inversion. So that's G with a B on the bottom, the third. How do you decide when to do inversions? Well, I would look at your melody. So if your melody is on a certain note, you might wanna avoid that note for the root note of your bass. That prevents any overlap or kind of parallel voicings as you go. So as we do something like this, Right, so I'm starting on that E. So I probably don't want a first inversion here. Right? That's gonna give us too many parallel octaves. Instead, we'd do something like this. Now, if you remember in my video about the secrets of orchestration, you want to avoid overdoubling the third. So anytime you have a first inversion chord, you want to make sure that you're avoiding having too many thirds in there. And I'll link that video in the description or in the cards if you want to check that out too. Inversions alone could be enough to add a lot of interest to your bass. Make sure you experiment a ton with that before you even move on to the next ones. Now to test your ears for inversions, I'm going to play a demo really quickly on the piano using a VST from the sponsor of today's video, Orange Tree Samples. See if you can hear when I'm using inversions and how it affects the piece. Now, if you like that VST, I play that straight out of the box. It was my favorite preset, the Stick Virtuoso, but it has a ton more features and presets in it. You can check that out on Orange Tree's website. It's called the Evolution 10 String Stick, and they're running an intro discount of $40. 
It's a really great VST and I love everything that Orange Tree Samples does. So thanks again for the sponsorship and back to the video. Now, if you look at this first example, you'll see the bass is just hitting downbeats. It's oppressive, it just sounds boring. So the second thing you could do that's relatively easy is actually to vary up the rhythms of your bass. And the best way to do that is to have the rhythms kind of offset where the melody lands. I'll show you what that means. So if our melody is landing, right? It's all downbeats. Bum, ba bum, 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 ba bum, bum, right? So we can have the bass do something like this. So I'm basically using the bass, basically, to accent the different spots, spots where the melody isn't as active. And this is especially useful if you have big silences or holds in your melody, like this spot over here. There's a big hold there. And you'll see in the finished example, what I've actually done is had a little ba ba bum bum Right? Now, just like anything, you wanna have some contrast. You don't wanna have the bass kind of offsetting the entire time or it's going to feel really uh, chaotic. At the same time, you don't wanna have the bass just holding all the time because it'll feel boring. So you wanna alternate and vary that up. But think of the bass like a percussive instrument as much as it is a bass instrument. Now, arguably one of the most challenging things is going to be using the bass as an actual counter melody. And what I mean by that is, as the melody does its own thing, the bass is gonna do its own thing. And you need to make sure that they're not interfering with each other. So it's very tricky to do and it takes a lot of time, but I'll give you kind of a brief overview of how you do that. This is the melody on its own if I play it again. Let's just start with that. So we have to be very careful here. We have these moments here, bum, 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 bum. And I'm listening to that stepwise motion. And what I could do is I could have some parallel motion, but not have it be in octaves or fifths because that's gonna sound a little bit off. So I'll harmonize that using the bass. So I'll take that five, four, three, and I'm gonna go three, two, one. Right, so. Right, so now we're having a bit of counter melody there. That's our bass. Now, to keep elaborating on that, we don't wanna have always, you know, parallel motion or anything like that. So we can have some alternation going on. So dum bum bum bum. So why don't we try some canon? So canon is basically where instead of having them sync up at the same time, we're actually having them stagger. So dun dun bum bum, right? Dun dun bum bum. It's kind of like an echo. And instead of having on this third, because that's where I'm landing here, I'm gonna actually have it land on the C. So dun dun bum bum. So now we're getting some counter melody developed. Let's now even incorporate the other things we were talking about. Let's do some rhythmic offsets. So dun dun bum bum dum bum dun da 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 dum da da dum. So we're gonna do some offsets here. So see, I'm having the bass kind of get a lot more activity and even between these two things, the piece has so much more energy to it. I could literally just hold the harmony or just do quarter notes. And it's already got so much life to it. I haven't even added percussion yet, but this is kind of the idea as we work through. And now if you look at the finished example, this is really what I've done. So I'd like you to look through this and see if you can identify the different techniques that I've used based on what we've talked about. Okay, so here's what I've done. There's not too many rhythmic offsets. I tried to space those out, but there is one significant one here that we talked about. There's also a bit of kind of contrary motion and then parallel motion. So check this out. There's that parallel motion we talked about. Bum, bum, bum. 
also you'll notice I'm kind of bouncing off the bass. So I'm using some rhythm to kind of drive it. So when the bass isn't doing anything or it's just kind of holding a note, I'm adding a little something, whether that's just a repeated note or even just rocking back five to one. Dun, da dun, da dun, dun dun, da dun, right? Now over here at the very ending, I held for a bit more kind of romance. And then a riff. Right? Now, this whole thing translates if you go to Orchestra, which I actually have pre-made here. And if you want to see the composition of this orchestral version, you can check that out on my Patreon, because Patreon is the primary way that this channel is supported. So here is what it sounds like when it's translated to full orchestra. There you have it. I would love to know what your favorite technique is or something that you learned, or if you wanna to add to the conversation, please leave that in the comments below. If you haven't already subscribed, I hope you subscribe because I think 75% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed. So hey, why don't you subscribe, become a member, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.